Hey guys, Doc here to tell you about something that could really give you the edge in gaming. I'm talking about our show sponsor, Fade Grips. Thumbstick grips as well as controller grips that give comfort, precision, and control so you can take your gaming to the next level. Just go to fadegrips.store and check out all they have to offer. And with our promo code, CAG20, at checkout, you can get 20% off your entire order. That's fadegrips.store with offer code CAG20. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 21 of Cross Atlantic Gaming. I'm your host, Risky the Kid, and joining me this week are my co-hosts, Doc H1X1. Hey, what's up? Chocolate Bear. Hey, everyone. And in our rotating fourth chair, coming back to the show again, we have community member Kaboski. What's up, Kaboski? What's going on, guys? Not much. Hi, everybody. It's your host, Risky here. The clip you're about to hear is from actually from the end of our show. For whatever reason, we completely forgot that we should put our Patreon giveaway at the top of the show, and we didn't remember until the end. But, with the magic of editing, you're now getting your Patreon giveaway right now. So, take it away, past us. So, if you would like to be entered into the drawing, um, sub on Patreon, because that's how you do it. Good work, everybody. Uh, I got my random name picker up here. Everybody's names are set up. Can I get a drum roll, please? And the winner is Viva Le Sweeney. Heck yeah. Congrats, Sweeney. Nice. Um, yeah, well, FIFA 20 pre-ordered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the thing. It's already out. So. <laughs> Is it Might have Red Dead coming up in his future now, though. He gets true. Pick, so. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, congrats, congrats Sweeney. Um, and shout out to all of our patrons, as always. Um, you guys are the reason that we can do things like this. All right, so thank you, past us. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Another week in the books. Another week of gaming. Kaboski, what would you get into? We haven't, you haven't been on the show in a while, so. It has been a while. You getting anything good in lately? God of War, actually. That's probably been the most recent single-player game I've been playing. And that's a hell of a game. Yeah, it is. I actually last night I was, I got I was I'm not trying to I'm trying to be vague with it without doing spoilers or whatever, but like I got to the part where I just I just I could just feel I was getting close to the end, so I was like, you know what, just power through the very end of this game, and probably like around like 11:30 or something like that, roll credits, and I was done. Yes. Well, you're not oh, such a good done, game. Done. Oh, uh, I'm. I Have I went, went back to, to your house. The, yeah, I went back to the house. I okay. saw that. All right. So <laughs> okay. I got that scene out of the way. Sorry. So you but, already uh, done. Done. Just not like the extra the Valkyries and all that stuff. Oh I've, God, no. <laughs> did I, you do I, any of the Valkyries? No, but I did a I did a counter one. I was like, oh, this can't be too bad. I don't know what everyone's complaining about. Oh my God, that was a dude. I literally had yeah. the same exact experience as you where I ran into my first one. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm sure my dodging and attacking abilities, I'll be fine. And then like yeah. five seconds later, I was like, never going to encounter one of those things again on purpose. So I don't, I don't know if each one or each one is different with how they, their attacks are or whatnot. But I, the one I hit was in the witch's cave. And he, the, the Valkyrie kept on like spawning like these like, like look like minion type of thing so i just thought like okay kill them and it's only me and the valkyrie as soon as i wiped out the last one she it's a she or he or she whatever it kept on spawning more of them i was like this is gonna be yeah. brutal and then i i just got i got wiped and i was like i'm not doing it because even yeah. like uh even in like rage mode i still couldn't even do it i couldn't even like put a dent in it so it's like i was way underpowered um, it's brutal. You had mentioned in Discord that you you got up to the part where um, I can't even think of the kid's name. What's the Trace? kid's name? Yeah. Um, where <laughs> he gets a little bit of knowledge and then he just, it all goes to his head and he's mm -hmm. just walking around being like, whatever, all the time. <laughs> Did you just want to punt him off a cliff? Yeah. One of the, yeah, one of the areas we were 
like on the uh it's like we're crossing like the one bridge like off the mountain now just like wouldn't it be awesome if i could just spart kick him <laughs> off it because <laughs> he just started getting like whatever and all this stuff it's just kind of funny because i because in the game you had you have a tray to shoot arrows into something to make whatever work and then he just every time he kept on shooting he just kept on going whatever right after he <laughs> fired his arrow i'm like oh my that's God, the this worst kid. Uh, like, this on kid's... twitter they had it's a thing a where the devs were like uh there is no friendly fire with your son and the first response was but why <laughs> and i kind of appreciated <laughs> that <laughs> yeah um there does come a point though where i think it's it might be your final fight with balder and you're on a, a big creature <laughs> yeah. when atreus really turns oh into my God. A, turns into a badass with his archery skills he's like legolas from lord of the rings just, <laughs> seriously he is i just, love that scene he's yeah, he he's like game. eagle eye with his arrows when he's like shooting at him and all that stuff i'm like whoo it's like doing backflips and hitting people <laughs> in midair can you imagine if he still had it like his big head whatever <laughs> after <laughs> <one> at him. <laughs> he <laughs> loses every arrow it's just <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever <laughs> whatever like there was a part like and I, I wish I could say it because obviously it's going to be spoilery, but it's kind of like where they ended up in the one area and he kind of like realizes how much of a, like a brat he was being like what he did to Kratos was like, I'm like, Oh, if he doesn't punt him off a cliff, I swear to God. Oh yeah. That was, uh, uh is that the scene where a, a gate is ruined? Yes, is that what you're talking about? exactly. Yeah. yeah. That one. I was like, this kid is going to die. I don't have kids yet, but this one's going to die. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I was going to ask you, how much did you think the story was going to turn that way to where it was just like something's going to happen where this kid's going to die and that's going to be towards the end? I honestly thought they were going to go that direction. but Oh, like like what, the, like what, the fate what the happened to the kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just knew he was going to be a brat. To be honest, I was kind of glad it was like a short-lived scene, maybe yeah. like an hour worth of gaming Yeah. to where that he was like finally like, I thought it was going to be like a third of the game. He was just oh like, whatever. <laughs> I think when they were play testing that whole game, they're like, there's no way we can make this segment last more than an hour because people are just going to uninstall the just game. Drop mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, that was, uh, that's like the, and I remember, uh, last weekend I was playing a little bit of it and it was, uh, like the part where a tra- Kratos and Atreus are fighting the two brothers. Yeah. And, he just kept on like whining and all like shut up or stop it because they were saying stuff to them like getting in the kid's head and my fiance was sitting on the other couch while she was doing her stuff while the game was while i was playing the game she goes like this kid is annoying <laughs> yep <laughs> and i'm like now i should have been like you should have been here when i was when he was like whatever it got worse <laughs> it just got oh, just 10 wait. times bad um so where is this sitting for you as far as uh some of the best games you've played this year is it up there for I, you i actually didn't play a lot of 2018 games uh it is better than spider-man i did i like this a lot better than spider-man okay uh i barely I barely dabbled into forza but that wouldn't be a game of the year material for me octopath i can never i'll never get that game done are you I'll still trucking be... a log in octopath we can move on yeah. to that if, if you're still playing that hmm what was it i'm sorry I saying we could talk about that now if you wanted, um, if you were still playing that. Yeah, I'm still playing it. Uh, it's just slowly but surely because I have like this little, I don't want to say, it's just always like a, whatever the TV's freed up and where my Xbox and PlayStation are at, I always pick that over priority over like the Nintendo consoles. That's always like, like the TV's free and like I could be like, have like 15 games I need to be on the Switch, but I'll still be like, oh, the TV's free. I'll just play on the Xbox. That just, no, that it just makes sense. gets a higher priority that's ever. How, yeah. so, I would assume that's how most people are. At least that's how I am, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's like my way forward. Yeah, my 3DS I, has been collecting so much dust, but I've been wanting to play all the like all the games I have on it. But What's a 3DS? Like, <laughs> uh, 3DS. This coaster. <laughs> it's kinda... <laughs> this coaster I use all the time. So I it's still have screens. mine somewhere, and I definitely still have a bunch of games. I think I have games mm-hmm. that are still in the shrink wrap that I bought when they were on sale for that thing. And then oh, the Switch yeah. came out, and it's just kind of like, well, 
fuck, I guess I'm never going to play this again. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened with me. Do you guys yeah. think the uh, new Pokemon game will be like the final send-off for the 3DS? I mean, it, uh, as in like, Wait. you probably won't ever be looking at the 3DS again. Not that you were anyways, but... There's a new Pokemon game for the 3DS? No, I'm saying when it comes out for the Switch. Oh, Oh my bad. I, mean, I think I, you talk about like there's no. that one last hurrah for the 3DS. No, because because I I know they're still making games for the 3DS. I think, or at least yeah, there's some porting, scheduled to come out still. But they're porting over Luigi's Mansion that was originally oh, on the right. GameCube towards it. Yeah, do you remember oh, yeah. that last Nintendo Direct doc? It was just all yeah. about what games were coming to the 3DS. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry, <laughs> I was super just excited like when they Crossing announced all those bust. great games. <laughs> oh, you kids, are you an Animal Crossing guy, Cabo? No, I never played one. I'm kind of interested, so just, but I don't know. If it's like the same thing as the mobile game, then no, I'll pass on that. Cause it's nah, like, I don't think it'll be anything like that. Yeah. Do they want to be my friend if I give them stuff type of thing? <laughs> it's like real life. It's got a lot of good life yeah, lessons true. in that mobile game. Yeah, it's true. It's like real life. <laughs> Here's some apples. You want to hang I'm, out? I'm popular. <laughs> it's just you like me worst. for my stuff. <laughs> Isn't like, because I did play a little bit of the mobile game, but it was just like, hey, you should make your house really cool so you can invite your friends over and show them your cool stuff. And they don't I, like me for my personality? Ba- ba- <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Although people did have fun with it because I was seeing uh, like stuff on Twitter go around where people had set up their house or their campsite, whatever the hell you call it. Like they had set up chairs around like a cage and like your people, when they show up, they will just randomly go to where you have seats and stuff. So it was like a circular rig of chairs around somebody in a cage and it was just almost like cultish like stuff going on i was just like oh well this is this is good internet great yeah, come see the person i've just put in my cage come on yeah. folks be my friend i was like maybe this mobile game be isn't so friend. bad <laughs> kind of want to go back to it now i want yeah, to right? check just it out cult. <laughs> just have her didn't know Animal these were cults here <laughs> Uh, Nintendo's probably just, somebody <laughs> at Nintendo's just horrified. Just <laughs> <laughs> shut it all down. <laughs> um, Kid all right, console. so back to <laughs> Octopath. Do you uh, is the end in sight in that game? Do you think you're nearing the end? Uh, I still got because each character has four chapters to go through. So do that multiply by eight. Oh, I guess so you, for characters, so you can gauge exactly how much time you have left, or how many mm-hmm. chapters or stories you have at least. Because yeah. I think you could. You don't have to pick up all eight of them. You could just do whatever you want you could just get like the four like four characters then like beef them up and just do their four stories and just call it a day type just of be thing done. yeah yeah because oh, wow, i don't okay. think there's like that one main boss i think they just each have their own and then that's it then there's okay. like well, boss that kind of answers my question because i was going to ask you like if yeah i was going to say if in any way they tie in meaning in a meaningful way now that you've beat one if you do another one like is there callbacks or like this person was here at this point, now I'm doing this, or is there anything like that going on? Kind of, yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just like minor just have, stuff, it's not huge yeah, story have, like, beats that tie together? They just each have their own story, and that's it, and then they go through, and they just do what they want to do, like, Alfin wants to be uh, the world's greatest apothecary kind of thing, so he's traveling around villages to to be, like, a traveling apothecary, um... Therion's trying to get this bracelet off of him because of his thieving skills went wrong and he's got to find three dragon stones. And I think that's just it. Once they're done, that's it. And then you kind of, I guess, roll credits on that character. So yeah, okay. the last question I have then, is there any of the storylines so far that you could just leave by the wayside? That, like you don't really like, feel like getting through them or do you think you'll push through all four push, stories yeah. for each of them? I'll, I'm probably going to go through all four stories on each of them. Each of them are all pretty good. Okay. There has been one that's kind of like, uh, like bad. Which one it's, is it? So we can avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> just the only just ones, say it. The only ones that just suck are some of the boss battles. Uh. Some are just like a, a huge pain in the rear kind of thing. Where, like one guy, like the one I just beat yesterday, no, uh, two days ago was Therion's like chapter three boss, and it was just this guy is just constantly stealing health, stealing mana off of you or skill points. They're basically, it's just basically mana and he, he just wouldn't die. He just kept on life stealing and he just, he, he like life steal like 2000 HP while we're like combined, just doing like 2,500 or something like that. So oh, it was just slowly, annoying. it was like a 30 to 45 minute fight. That's obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, there's some that are like that. And it's just some, I almost like throw my switch out the window. Don't blame me. Do all the st- stories tie together? <laughs> no. Or is it literally uh, one 
chocolate. It's what we've been talking about for the past ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. I have been uh, away. <laughs> not <laughs> to answer your question, no. So far, nothing really has like combined them all together. Right. So, but I said it before in the last time I did this in. I would be amazed if there was like some tie in with it. Like it would just be like that. Holy crap! They did. They did combine them all together. But I'm not. I'm really not expecting it to be honest with you. Yeah, like after you beat like the last character of the eight, and like all that. like I'm. That's what I was kind of wondering. Like, just then yeah. does something maybe unlock? Or I'm assuming not. Something that maybe. would almost be. You know, know might that. be too much of an ask for people at that point. Yeah, I know it's like. I think it's just probably after you beat like the chapter four, you just roll credits like probably like eight different times. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I did this before. The same song and guys. dance. <laughs> we get it. That is, that's a weird way to take care of that. Just <laughs> you could literally roll credits eight times. <laughs> it's just I don't know. Yeah, once I get through chapter four, I'll find out sooner. You'll enough. actually I just know. Got, like, right. I'm like two peop- two or three people away from because I'm on the chapter three section, and I just have like three more to go. And hopefully okay, they're cool. about as e- easier than the last guy I just dealt with. So, because I just probably put a lot of time in that game, right? I mean, I'm <laughs> it sounds like it. Forty, I think, forty hours, I would say. Oh, okay. I was expecting actually more than that. Okay, that's not too bad. Some people, I th- I saw some people say like they went up to like eighty, even almost a hundred type of one. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if that's a lot yeah. of grinding, like leveling up. If people I'm spending a lot of time doing that. Yeah, I'm getting to that point right now where before i go like kind of fight the boss or whatever i'm just grinding levels because the next here the next character needs to be like it's recommended level at 38 and that character is at like 28 or something like that and i'm like crap so you're just walking back and forth through the grass just waiting <laughs> yeah, for kind of, to kind of like you. pokemon stuff yeah it's seriously like pokemon <laughs> style you just get that random encounter yep oh jrpgs that's why, that's why i can't get into that game <laughs> halting yeah, my progress a- every 10 seconds Mm-hmm. Oh, that's annoying because when you just like, I don't want to deal with anyone, then you just get stopped. I'm like, come on. Well, I wish there was just like <laughs> a a button or an option where it's like, for like right now, I don't want to have any enemy encounters, but then there, you can turn it back on uh, when you do need to fight and like level and stuff. There is something that kind of does help you. One of the characters, Cyrus, he has like a kind of like a passive skill he gets when you level up enough to where your random encounters is like decreased. I don't want to say exponentially, but it's a lot less. You'll deal with them, so that's probably so you can just roll with them as like your party leader and exactly be done with it. Yeah, that's or, really, there's more game, complicated. Uh, yeah, or you go ahead, Cabo. I was gonna say there's just like there's a little bit more like <laughs> I don't say complicated <laughs> stuff. I guess uh, where like then you know, it involves with jobs and whatnot, and that's where like. Because, like, your main character is, like, your character has, like, one job, but it could have a secondary job, which is someone else's, like, I guess, other job? Jobs on jobs? I'm not <laughs> jobs really on jobs on jobs. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I've really not explained it this well. It's, like, complicated to explain, but, like, later on in the game, you start experiencing the, you can start equipping your character with a secondary job. And that's, like, like you could have an apothecary who's also a warrior that kind of thing. Sounds- it sounds like a callback to a lot of the tactics games I played back in the day, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, as yeah, far it's like, as a, like this just is like their a, primary, this is their secondary. Yeah. Exactly, and you inherit that secondary skills and and their passive skills. So mm-hmm. you have someone else having that Scott, like Cyrus's secondary skill, where your chances to evade random encounters is a lot a lot greater, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I, I I might eventually give this game a shot. I mean, it looks obviously it looks amazing, but yeah, it sounds kind of up my alley as far as that kind of stuff. I was gonna say like I don't I, that that's why I was glad he asked you if there was a option to do the whole random encounter thing because I know in Bravely Default they kind of had a slider for that kind of stuff, and I and I know they that was the previous game they made, so I didn't know if they had kind of carried mm. any of that over or anything. But mm. I I played a little bit of Bravely Default. I don't think I've ever seen that. I didn't beat it, but I, that's one of the games I want to have. I want to get on my 3ds to beat. If you want a copy of Bravely Default, that's one of the games I have in shrink wrap for my 3DS, so I I can send that to you. (laughs) 3DS, you say? That's okay. uh, Shine actually gave me Bravely Default and Bravely Second, so I do have those. And I traded him my Fire Emblem Fates games. So he's got those while I have his That's the last thing that was in my 3DS. It was definitely a Fire Emblem game. Yeah, I almost actually almost went up to a well, GameStop to buy I mean, a Fire Emblem game for not that long ago. Why? Stop you... doing this to yourself. 
I don't know. What better way to help? What better way to fix a backlog problem than buying more? <laughs> exactly. I kind of, I kind of like the Fire Emblem games. I'm not gonna hate on you for that though. They're pretty fun. No, um, they're, fun. they're great. I just, I have too many not, other things that are yeah, well, better. Yeah, you're right. As far as that goes, yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I was gonna say, uh, as far as the Bravely Default thing goes, risky. Just wait to the next Nintendo uh, Direct. There is more than a good chance that you might get some 3DS games ported over, and that could be one of them. So <laughs> perfect. Mm-hmm. Just wait. Just what I wanted. Just wait. All right, uh, Cabo. Anything else you're playing? Just dabbling into Forza Horizon 4 and just mm-hmm. every now and then playing Overwatch. All right. Well, uh, we can talk about Forza then because I'm sure that's – I played a bunch of that. Doc, you played a bunch of that. Yep. Uh, Chocolate, I think, also played well, a bunch I of touched that. touched it. Touched a little bit of it last night. Okay. Nice. Is so, that like the first time you played it last night? Forza Horizon 4, yeah. I jumped on two couple of weeks ago or a month ago and it wasn't for me. I'm not a big okay. racing man, but this one looks and feels quite nice, and I enjoy smashing into other people's cars. <laughs> I hate your driver tar. <laughs> he is crap. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate driver tar is the one that's always going in the wrong direction, trying to head on people. Like. Oh yeah, definitely. I smashed into uh, someone, took a clip of it, and uh, sent sent it to him via Twitter. I was like, "Do we need to exchange details now?" <laughs> yes, I saw that tweet. <laughs> That's actually like, pretty good, chocolate. I like T-boned that. him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's my uh, here's my insurance. Uh, uh, yeah. If you'll just kindly send yours. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. That that game is. Uh, so I'm. So are are you guys all out of the initial four seasons? Um, opens up to the multiplayer. H- have you guys got to that point yet? I don't think so. I am still in autumn. Okay, so you're still doing the initial first string of seasons kind of thing right yeah i think i can advance but there's like so much races i could do still so i've been kind of like let's go do this or jump off this cliff well those don't go away just you know if you like progress the seasons yeah you still have all those options to race yeah yeah oh never mind then i might just basically once you get through those initial four then you will open up to what the everybody's everybody's on the same time at that point and then you're basically just doing the same season as everybody else every week. And then at the top of every hour, you get like a Forza-thon event, stuff like that. So the, the world opens up with a lot more. Um, you still have all the same events you can go to, but you have actually season-themed events only for that week also. Okay. Um, so this so is where, cool. I'm com- where I'm confused. So the very right at the very beginning, you do the four seasons thing, which takes, what, about half hour, if that. Pro- uh, like longer than pro- that, I think. Yeah, no, you're, you're I'm talking, still in it, and I've been playing. Yeah, for you're hours. talking about the initial. Race, yeah, I thought you were talking yeah, about, like the, I'm talking about the initial race, the very first yeah. race. So I've only just done the first stunt, stunt run. So I'm I'm not that far into it. So I've got another. Mm-hmm. How many? You got a while ago. Uh, you probably what, what would you say, risky? Probably three or four, probably at least. I think so. I, oh, yeah. Jesus. It, to get through the initial, <laughs> yeah, dude, because I. I had to have played at least like five ish hours of that, and I don't yeah, think I'm it, through yet. Yeah, so it might Jeez. even be more like five or six. Yeah, because like, it, well, see, they don't do a great job. Well, maybe they did, and I just didn't pay attention. But I don't feel like they did a great job of explaining like, because even when you're in that first initial run of you, you basically go through a season, you get enough. I think they call it uh, what do they call it? Not followers, but uh, uh, I was experienced. No, um, it's like their version of experience points. Yeah, I can't, it's, it's CP. I can't think of what it is. Yeah, it's, it's whatever they call it. And then you get up to enough to get the showcase event. You do the showcase event, and then you're into the next season. Or I don't even know if it's tied to the showcase event. You just do a race, and you're in the next season. And basically, you'll go through those four. But what's weird is you still have people online with you at that point, too. You just don't have all the other stuff going on. But then once you get through those initial four seasons, you're just instantly on whatever that week's is, which was weird for me because – I had just finished spring. I think I don't know if spring or was the last one I did, but then it just immediately shuffled me on into autumn because that's what the actual like oh, okay. this is what everybody is on right now kind of thing. Yeah, because okay. um, yeah, like I'm in on, I'm in winter yeah. right now, so I yeah. still have a few of those spring. intro ones to do. Yeah, hmm. but overall the racing in that game, I mean, it's to me it feels. I don't know, just like Forza Horizon 3 from what I can remember. Yeah. Which obviously isn't a bad thing. It's the best racing mm-hmm. game I've ever played. 3 was. And there's no reason 4 won't take the reins from I there. played 3 like a week before 4 came out just because like I haven't really played 3. 
but like I had it was like in my library for the longest time, but I just never like really turned it on. So when four was coming around, and I think it was around when the review embargoes came out, I kind of got like that. I really want to race itch. So I just turned on like last week. I just turned on like Forza Horizon three and just played that till the fourth one came out. That's a good one though. They're, I mean, yeah, they're oh, yeah. both good. I was about to say Very up until game. this one, that was probably my favorite racing game <laughs> to that point. So. What do you think of this? You have to race four or five hours until you can, air quotes, unlock the full game. Well, I don't think that's I don't think that's fair to say either. Because I mean, even in those four, three or four hours, you still have people you can do. You can still do all the multiplayer stuff. It's just, I guess they basically wanted you to go through their standard. I guess you could call that their version of a standard campaign. I guess you could say. And okay. after that, then you're just on the same timetable as everybody. Yeah, it's, and, it's just, the only. All right, go ahead. I would say it's just kind of like getting a taste of each season is what the tutorial yeah. feels like. So then when you're thrown into like just autumn right now for a whole week, it's like you kind of know what to expect. Yeah. yeah. And to be fair, you're not missing out on a lot because so when I finally got into the point where I was linked or was I on the standard, you know, this is the on live games as a service thing going on right now you have a forzathon event at the top of every hour and you also can do uh ranked leagues that give you specific prizes for every rank you get to and then um once the season starts you will also have about i think there was about four or five t- uh events and they and they signify them for that season by putting a little clock on them so you know it's only for that autumn season or whatever and each one, like, you'll go up to that race, and it's like, okay, well, do you want to play single, co-op, or online? And if you do single, it's like, well, you can race at these three difficulties, and you get these prizes if you if you finish first at whatever difficulty, or second or third. And then if you do multiplayer, if you finish in the top three, you get this prize. So it even gives you, like, themed, like, our prizes based on that stuff, too. That's cool. I like that. I, yeah. I need to get through that intro stuff mm-hmm. so I can just be caught up with what's happening live every week yeah because yeah. we're, we're already on our second season then or is yeah because the f- technically they had that four days early um so that's on the seat that's so dumb so that's when the season yeah, actually started so then the people that got yeah. it on like the actual release date were only had a couple days of exactly summer. yep yeah because it started summer with the with the ultimate edition and then it went to fall for the current week and like it's just about to start till winter, yeah. So that's uh, kind of lame. Next day or two. But I'm assuming when summer comes around again, you'll have a chance to, yep. mop up any things yep. that you may have missed from summer the previous week or something. Yeah, and and they kind of mentioned that too. Basically, they're going to take it at like um, the way I understood it. Now this could be I, I could have just been interpreting their roadmap wrong, but they're going to have similar prizes for like uh, two to three months. Um, they'll sprinkle some new stuff in, but then after that point is when they'll really start changing things up as far as the stuff you can get. Um, so they'll give you like, you'll have at least two or three attempts at some of the stuff. Um, so, you know, it's not like you miss a week, you're out kind of thing. Okay, good. Um, Danny, you guys have a favorite race type? I think there's one that stands out, at least for me. I know, Doc, you had mentioned it, but those... The cross country <laughs> races Those are fun. So much fun. They're crazy too, but they're fun. Yeah, just plowing through forests and hills and cities, and you just go but, everywhere. I just, I just. What do you guys think about like the real life implications? It's just like some guy just went out here and made this race, and he didn't even bother to tell the people to to move their fence or like do something. Or he didn't even try to avoid this fence. He's just like, they'll be fine. They'll they'll build a new one. Or like, oh wow, I've got that to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny because you'll go racing through the town where there's like <laughs> checkpoint flags and people are just out at like tables outside of restaurants, just like enjoying a meal. <laughs> and you can just plow through their tables. And stuff. Well, I was going to say my driving's not good, so yeah, they'll be murdered. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they make it impossible to actually murder people they, or animals because I tried killing some goats. That sounded bad, but I tried running over some goats <laughs> that were running through a field, and they kind of just either really fast or they went through my car. I don't know what happened, but definitely didn't take I'm any damage sh- from any goats. Yeah, I think like the people they have like cinder blocks in front of them that are made of mithril, I guess, because yeah, you can't <laughs> get through those. Uh, it's impossible to kill people. Not that I've actively tried, but you know, stuff happens. So. I'll record it. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, I don't know if there's a 
ton more to say about Forza. It's a it's a good ass racing game. Um, we do have a Cross Atlantic Gaming racing team. If you just search Cross Atlantic Gaming in your uh, clubs and through the Xbox app or through the Xbox, uh, it'll be the one that's actually labeled as a Forza racing team. Cross Atlantic Gaming. The little abbreviation will be CAG. Um, so yeah, join us over there. I'm sure we'll do some team racing at some point. I was having issues when I was starting up events, just playing against real people in the first few days. I don't know if the servers were a mess or what, but I would try to load into a game and it would be trying to populate one of 12 or, and it it would go up to like (laughs) two of 12. And then after 45 seconds, it'd be like, well, we couldn't do that. And it would just kick me back out onto the road and be like, you want to start again? So it was like the only way I felt like I could race was either solo or co-op where it's me and like one of you guys and then just racing against drivatars i couldn't get the like actual racing against other people to work but that was also early on in the week so i don't know if that got better or changed yeah they they could have had server problems i I will say to be fair i didn't try any multiplayer till i'd gotten through the initial four seasons and i don't know if maybe that affects anything Um, i've only tried a couple races but i got into them i will say like when I tried to get into a race, it clearly was saying like it was migrating me to a different server or something. Um, so maybe they've straightened all that out. But yeah, I, I didn't try any multiplayer for a good, a few hours, you know, into that game. So, so yeah, maybe at some point we can do some of the team racing um, with the community. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely. A fair few people playing it. There, it seems like at, whenever I turn on my Xbox right now, it's everybody's playing Forza until. Yep. Assassin's Creed came out. I've seen some people dabbling in that, but um, all right, Kaboski, is that pretty much it for you? Yeah. Uh, speaking of Assassin's Creed, I'm actually at since I've beat God of War that the next game I'm going to do is finish up uh, Origins because I still have that to go through. Nice. How far are you through that? Uh, I have to take care of the crocodile. Okay. That is my most recent target. I don't I remember yeah. even how that I think list. It's, yeah, went. it's a crocodile. It's the second tier. Oh, okay. okay. I was about to say, because, yeah, I was like, I was going to tell you, I was like, don't get too comfortable because there definitely is another tier that opens up, but at least you're on that <laughs> oh, one. So. Another tier or I, two. I, <laughs> yeah. Eight. No spoilers, but. Uh, but I was going to ask you guys, we're back to the Forza talk quickly. Are you guys, are you all, I know Risky and uh, Doc, you're both our Chaco. Do you have the uh, One X? Yeah, yeah. I've got the One X. I haven't played it on the One X, though. So yesterday huh. I was on my slim downstairs because we have people oh, okay. over. I was going to say, are you guys doing the uh, performance or visuals for the uh, 1X enhancement? Uh, performance for me, 60 FPS. Visuals for me? Really? Okay. I'm Because uh, I was surprised. I feel like everyone is on visuals, so it's surprising that, like, that you're on performance. Yeah. I, any game I can turn off motion blur or anything and I can get a good frame rate, I'm all for it always. So I, It hasn't yeah. seemed that – I don't know. I guess I probably need to switch it over and actually – try and compare and contrast the two but i mean it's definitely good either way it's just mm-hmm. that's just if you know gun to my head that's the one i picked so you know it's it's either way i would be fine with honestly because it is a definitely a good looking game so mm-hmm. no matter how yeah, there's a video it. i saw with a comparison it's like the regular xbox the xbox one x on performance and the one x on visuals and it's actually really noticeable like oh yeah yeah no it's quali- like texture and like distance view type of thing yeah the first thing you do when you pull up any game that's native 4k is you're just like man like there is no shimmering these edges are crisp like so okay. it's it's yeah it's noticeable so all nice. right um chocolate what have you been playing this week not a great deal um beginning of the week i tried to jump a jump on sea of thieves played a little bit of that and uh my navigator blew me out, so thanks, Doc. Oh. <laughs> I've had the worst staycation week ever. I have gamed the least during my vacation than I do on the busiest work week, so FML, I don't know. So I was, uh, who was I on with? I was on with HB and Chaotic, and we tried to do the new Forsaken Shores, but I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> so that was poo-pooed, so we did a couple of missions and that was it. That, I'm sorry, chocolate. That game's yeah, okay. so funny because it's like, if you're not playing with the right people, it's the worst experience in the world. But then if you're actually playing with somebody who knows what they're doing, you just you get so much more done. 
Like if I'm yeah. playing with an inexperienced crew, it's like we just spent three hours and got like 500 gold. What, what did we do? <laughs> and then I can spend an hour with Doc as my captain and be like, well, we're 20 grand up on the hour. So yeah. <laughs> It is crazy. It is. That's the only person I like playing with or see of these with Doc because I know he's on it like anything. He's like, we need to go to here, here, here. And I'm like, right, I'll just stay on the ship. <laughs> right. Shout me if you need me. It's so much easier to just nod my head and be like, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. So I can do I've that. carried this chest. Where do you want it, Doc? Okay, right. Yep. There it is. <laughs> okay. Well, you got to get captain. another. Uh, we, I will try to get another session going though, to where I actually uh, show up to and not not bail on you guys because I, I really want. <laughs> hey, I really wanted to play it too. I've still not played Forsaken Shores, and trust me, nobody wants to as much as me. So um, I haven't either. I still need I to. Yeah. I haven't touched that game in months. Uh, it's, it's still, a, they've changed so much. They have actually. They yeah. have changed so much. I went in and I was like, oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> the menu systems changed. The um, yeah inventory how to store your bananas and your cannonball oh jesus yeah there's like cursed cannonballs now you can shoot at ships and like yeah. immediately oh. anchor them or you know it's, oh, it's like pvp is crazy now too so yeah um and what else obviously i've been hitting fifa as uh being a british guy how's your ultimate team football. coming along it's looking damn sexy um <laughs> <laughs> well, not as good go as, on <laughs> well d- semi sexy you know just before you're getting ready to go out um, not as good as some of the the other people in the community, but who's got the best ultimate team right now? Uh, one of our newest members, Ten Thousand Fists, I think, has probably got the best team at the moment. Um, Was he under the no spending, real money rules that you guys have been playing by? Uh, d- no, he he joined just before <laughs> the the not putting any yeah, okay. hard earned pounds. So but, that explains that. <laughs> <laughs> well, a tiny bit, but also, to his credit, his pack luck is ridiculously impressive. So, so he's he just will had always some good RNG. T- perfect RNG. He always picks up, you know, some of the premium players throughout the season all the time. And it's, I, I haven't given him my account occasionally and said, just open a pack <laughs> here and a pack there for me. <laughs> Not that I'm superstitious, but <laughs> yeah. Mm. So occasionally he comes up a, a winner. Um, and then, as I said, I jumped on For- Forza as well. And that's been my, my gaming week. Not a lot, but um, not bad for me. All right. Doc, did you play anything out of the ordinary or anything we haven't talked about? I didn't get to a lot. Um, since I was not at home a lot, I played a lot on the Switch and played a lot more uh, Into the Breach. Um, got to the final boss battle three times. Uh, last time was heartbreaking because I was one round away from victory and lost. So I'm getting um, getting closer to beating that game, though. But, man, is that game really freaking good, though, especially if you like any kind of tactic-style thing. It is uh, super, super awesome. Just don't feel – I mean, like, you know, you'll, you'll lose or whatever and have another run, but it just feels so good to play. So I love it. So you played your Switch this week, and you didn't play any Mario Party? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, did that? It, <laughs> wait, is that live? Is that? I... <laughs> yes, it's live, and I played some of it this weekend. <laughs> oh, we talked about how yeah, Odyssey was really stupid for launching the same day as it. That's right, I forgot. Yeah, get uh, out of the way. <laughs> Super Mario Party is out. <laughs> the juggernaut is here. <laughs> um, I will say, I am looking forward to eventually getting into that and us uh, getting a group together because uh, as much shit as I give Mario Party, I played a lot of it back in the day. So uh, you know, uh, I. I'd be a hypocrite to say that I'm not looking forward to playing that. Yeah, so I played, I only played two games. I played two of the, like, I don't know, the original Mario Party where you're just going around the board. Like, the Mario Party that I remembered at least, because I haven't played any of them since N64, probably. I think I'm probably in the same boat. I think I played briefly the GameCube, the first GameCube one, but I think that's my last. So, yeah, it's a lot of what I remember from... The older games, just kind of, you get out on the board, everybody rolls their die, uh, you go a certain amount of spaces, and then at the end of everyone's turn, you do the mini games. Um, the mini games right. here are some of, uh, not some of them, it seems like a decent amount of them, uh, you use the actual motion controls with the Joy-Cons, mm. which I'm not a huge fan of, because what this does is makes it so you have to use a single Joy-Con for everything you're doing in this game. 
And I was just about to ask that, yeah, if it kind of forces you to. There's no less comfortable way to play a video game than with a <laughs> single Joy-Con. Um, so that kind of sucks, but it really doesn't hinder the experience at all. It's I played it a decent amount with Megan this weekend, and uh, the mini games are all good. I didn't really run into any mini games that I was like, man, let's skip this. The only issue I do have with the mini games is that I, we kept getting like the I want to call them free for all mini games. So it's one v one v one v one. I feel like in the older not, game, not two v two teams. Yeah, two v two or three v one. You used to oh, like right. if you landed, if one person landed on like a red space and everybody else landed on blue spaces, like the red guy would be on his own for whatever event right. came up. Um, so over the we played two full games, like fifteen or twenty rounds. So they're decently long and we had one three v one mini game that whole time the rest of them were wow. all free for all so really that kind of sucked um but the cool thing though is we didn't run into a single mini game twice over those two long games so that was yeah that was literally going to be my two questions was did you run into the same one uh, multiple times or does it seem like there's a good variation and then basically how were the mini games because that's what a mario party game rests on really so yeah they're, but, they're good you have things you have as simple things as like memory puzzles or it's like everybody takes turns flipping something over and if you match them you get a point or whatever uh rhythm games like with timing um all sorts of stuff i didn't really run into any of them and i was like this is bad shouldn't be in this game so not much to complain about there and that was only playing that one mode oh and then (laughs) after we'd finished those there's this one new mode called soundstage where it's it's all rhythm games that follow each other like one after the other after the other um but it's literally just mini games that have to do with rhythm and you just play them instead of doing the actual game with rolling dice and stuff and then who, oh. whoever kind of like guitar hero where whoever hit the most notes at the right time in the games is going to win um that's a it's an interesting way to change things up i guess yeah so they d- I don't know. They have the, nor- the normal Mario Party mode. They had that mode. And they also had the only, only other one I tried was the River Survival, uh, which you're in a giant, like, white water raft going down <laughs> a river, and everybody's trying to move their Joy Cons and, like, paddle at the right times. It reminds me of Connected Ventures. If you ever played that, <laughs> that mini game yeah. in the raft. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I never did so. Yeah, it's just uh, it's more Mario Party. Definitely wouldn't play it by myself, but I could see it's one of those good have some people over, have a few beers. Um, one of those type of good couch co op games. I think that game is literally literally the most perfect game for that you could probably have. Yeah, totally. I definitely um, get it. Yeah, I think it sucks because I feel like Nintendo games never go on sale, so it's tough being like, yeah, maybe wait for a sale because it might never happen. I. <laughs> No. I was just going to say, I was like, I mean, I could wait, but then I'm like, I guess Nintendo kind of makes it easy for me because if it's a first-party game, I know it's never going to go on sale, so I might as well buy it no now. No point so. in waiting. Yeah, right. yeah, they make it easy for me. Um, that was That's really it for Mario Party, though. Um, the other thing I hopped into was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, I rented it, but I think after what I've played, I'm probably going to buy it with whew, whether or not I'm game sharing. It's that doesn't really matter to me at this point for it because I think it's worth sixty dollars from the eight-ish hours I've played. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely more AC Origins, with obviously a more interesting setting, as you had said before, Doc. And I agree. I'd rather be dealing with Greece and Athens and the Spartans. Um, yeah, definitely yeah. a more fun setting. the The whole game starts with. Uh, pretty much it's just that battle <laughs> in 300 <laughs> like it's a it's a big open battle you're leonidas which yeah that's it literally picks straight from <laughs> 300 and history i, mean, I, I gotta, guess but i was just gonna say like they literally like they literally took a move off of a Zack snyder movie 300 with the spartan kick i mean that is straight from that movie you know so i mean that's literally <laughs> i have the spartan kick as an ability tied tied to a button right now i don't know how much more i could ask for from this i mean I, that yeah literally that's 100 okay with me um 
Dude, the refresh on the Spartan kicks? Kick is like three seconds, so I've Spartan kicked a lot of people. It does like 400% damage. <laughs> um, it's it's a great way to get out of um, combat, too, because there's like pushback on the sides. So if one guy's in front of you and you kick him, it's like the other guys kind of fall over on the sides. It's a, it's a great power move. Uh, okay. Also, nice. uh, pro tip, um, so early on I had to face a... Because the thing about this game is it's a RPG styled in the fact that if you have a guy a few levels ahead of you or above you, it is brutal, um, and they can be really tanky. Oh. Um, oh, go ahead, Risky. I was, gonna... I was oh, sorry. I thought he was going to say something. Um, just saying that they're going to stomp you if they're a few levels yeah. above you. But one thing about the Spartan kick, as I will say, is kind of like a pro tip. Um, if you do happen to face somebody really, or at least a couple levels higher than you that you think you probably aren't going to win in a prolonged battle, um, one thing I did with the mercenary early on was I had him follow me to a cliff edge, and then I Spartan <laughs> kicked him over the cliff, and he di- And if it's a tall enough cliff, they will die. So, did done. Did you yell, "This is Sparta" at all? <laughs> I probably should have, but I'm kind of regretting you know, it was still not the- having yelled that at all this week. <laughs> yeah. 100 percent. i was still in the testing phase i didn't know how it would pan out but it worked so uh yeah just uh kind of i don't know i guess that's considered cheese but i don't know it it worked so no it's definitely a good one i don't know why i never thought of that i don't know why i never thought of that because when you're hovering over that ability and the ability tree the video that they show you is literally her (laughs) spartan kicking a dude off a cliff so it's like how the game wants me to use it and i just never thought to actually try kicking people off of things uh, that, that does it only abilities tree has some good videos yeah <laughs> does it only work for like uh just enemies like like can you like spartan kick just like random npcs around the area i'm pretty sure you can spartan kick anybody i haven't tried but now i will <laughs> you can definitely damage just some NPCs merchant just gets spartan kicked i like it that that's where your head went though it's like all right well that's cool you can kick enemies but uh can i kick the guy who's trying to sell me some wood <laughs> your prices are atrocious <laughs> kick yeah right this is sparta <laughs> A parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yep. So a little GTA vibe there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, who did you did you pick Cassandra or Alexios, Doc? Uh, Alexios. Okay. See, I went with Cassandra. I <laughs> I googled who should I use, Cassandra or Alexios, <laughs> uh, and it seemed like people thought the voice acting might have been a level above with Cassandra over Alexios. So that's literally the only reason I went with that. I will say, yeah, early on, uh, Alexios is really hamming it up with his, some of his line re- deliveries, so yeah, I could see that getting kind of old <laughs> after a while. <laughs> um, Cassandra, she's not bad, though. I, I, She's definitely tough. That's the one thing that seems very different about the protagonists between Origins and Odyssey. It's like these guys mm-hmm. are a lot more brash where Bayek was kind of just like the sheriff of the town and like he was friends with everybody and right. But like these two are just pretty much mercenaries just out to kill people and get money. So 100%, yeah. they definitely seem very different. Um, but it was cool being able to choose from the two and then that kind of um, at least as far as I know, that adjusts how your storyline went, like, in the past. Yep. Um, so, are you the older sibling in what you're playing then, Doc? So, what I gather is, no matter which you pick, you're the older, and they are, at least when you were a child, they were still a baby. Like, you're at least a few years ahead of them, whichever one you pick. So, it kind of reverses that. Okay, I was wondering that, because, um, like, Cassandra was obviously, for me, she was the one that was older, and, like, she had her little brother, Alexios. But I was like, well, if I was playing as Alexios, a lot of this <laughs> doesn't make sense. So they must yeah. flip-flop yeah. depending on who you choose. So that's cool. So you, it yeah. definitely kind of alters your past, the storyline from your past. Um, yeah. Dude, no matter does, what, uh, you still end up there on that island, you know, no matter what, whichever you right. pick. So, Do they have, like, separate skill points? Like, skill lines, I guess you would say? Abilities? I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't actually know because I... <laughs> only played as one of them yeah I, I guess i don't know yeah true they don't seem like they the skills seem generic enough where either of them could use them as far as mm-hmm. i can tell so yeah i definitely didn't see anything like branded like alexios only or anything like right. that so yeah i wasn't sure i had I'm trying to think of a game that does that but i, I can't think of one right now I, but i, just I will say as far as npcs case. go though that guy early on who is your uh Mar- I guess marcos he was your 
Marcos. He is super freaking annoying, man. Yep. <laughs> Oh geez, I can't wait till I'm off this. Or, or, well, I, or, or I guess I guess I got off that island, but I, I was so glad when I got kind of away from that story beat. From him. Yeah. So that's yeah, <laughs> that's another cool thing about this one though is that you have the actual like dialogue trees. So if you like, you want to be a dick to him, you can just be a dick to him. <laughs> true, true. Which I did. <laughs> that's I'm just being like. Usually I choose the good guy route. The only place I really didn't do that was in The Witcher Three. Like Geralt, I just felt it should mm-hmm. be a big badass dickhead to everybody <laughs> so i was and i'm doing that same thing here but i feel like the mass effect games it was like no i can't do that like shepherd's a good guy <laughs> but this time yeah. around yeah she's just a badass who has gives a lot of lip to everybody i always hated that I, those games when you try to be a good guy but you always you make the wrong decision you think it's yeah. like the good thing and it just like someone just hates it yeah like oh no oh, yeah like, come on why those... trying to romance I you to... and i told you to f off <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I usually go Paragon my first playthrough, but uh, I, I always hate it when games too would give you very um, nondescriptive voice lines to say, and then when you, your character delivers them, it's like oh, <laughs> way the other way, and I'm just like not intended at all. Like, put like, put an angry face or a happy face or like a laughing face something. at the beginning of the dialogue line, so uh, so I know which way I'm guiding the conversation. Oops, yeah, didn't right. mean that one. Yeah, exactly. you'll see yeah, when exactly. it's like, it's words that like, well, at least uh, he's no longer in pain or like somebody passed away, but then your character be like, finally the old guy dead, what a dick. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? I, I, that's not the sentiment I not had. Not the tone I was trying to set here. <laughs> that's not at all. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm definitely going to keep playing this one. Um, I think I'm going to have to buy it. This game seems like it's going to be meaty. Seems, seems yeah, like there's. I've got to finish Origins now. Yeah, I, from what I've gathered, there are basically three separate main endings in the game, all because this isn't spoilery to say, but basically you have your um, story that you're progressing with your character. Um, this isn't spoiler to say, but you're in the Animus again. You're, you know, you're going back yeah. in the Animus to this character. Um, you have your out. Of, you have your real world stuff that'll have a separate ending, and then you also have. Um, so the way they basically do the whole Templars in this game is it's almost like Illuminati type organization. And that is a whole separate thing where you can track down all of them. And that has its own separate ending apparently too. So this, there's a lot to this game apparently. So a weekend of Redbox isn't going to get me through it? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I, I threw that out the window real quick. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to have to buy this. So, yeah. yeah. That's all right. From where I'm standing, this seems like a, a good buy. Although... <laughs> Oh, Red Dead's like three weeks away at this point. <laughs> yeah, I can't have that's two of really, these games in my life. Really got the push through. That's really this. looming. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely putting Red Dead on hold. You're putting Red Dead on oh. hold. Are you? Uh, are you a human being? Are you alive? Yeah, I'm pinching myself. I'm not dreaming. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> you have more. Re- you have more restraint than I do. So. Yeah. I, well, I gotta finish Origins, and I gotta other stuff to play and I, I, I think after origins i'm gonna do a palette cleanser like a shooter or like a linear type of game definitely a good idea and i think yeah. uh, i finally want to get prey out of the way oh man Prey's really Prey's good so oh, good I, I felt like yeah. that game was so underrated when it came yep. out oh man i love that game i never played it mm. you can probably find Me it super too. cheap now man yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's if you like sci-fi horror type style, it is all of that and really good story. Yeah, well, I've got too many. My backlog just keeps going up. And yeah, up we're trying to help you out and add to it, make it bigger. <laughs> yeah. you, but my you, game time you take is going my round down. By more games. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> guess I was confused on how this worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, right, right. Just take your approach risky. Just buy it; it'd be fine. Don't worry. Yeah, because then it. someday, exactly. if you do want to play it, it'll be there, and then exactly, or maybe it just won't. And you will have wasted your money, and you'll never play the game. <laughs> oh, that, that uh, got sad. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's really all I had to say about Odyssey. And then, obviously, I played some Forza, but we already touched on that. So it's good stuff. Everybody good? Mario Party. Mario Party is the best game of the year. Hashtag game of the year. Game of the year. Yeah, Hashtang. I mean, like, basically, Hashtang. when we say, <laughs> when we say game of yeah, the year, we're just actually saying second place, because Mario Party is default, so. Right. Second game of the year. That's the hashtag we're going <laughs> to have to use. Do you think, you think it's going to win a fam- best family game? Uh, oh, probably. I can see it doing that. I haven't played Overcooked yeah. 2. I know that would probably be a contender. 
That's just yeah. like best game to get a divorce. Uh, that's true. Best. Yeah, that or Fortnite, I guess, probably. Best destructive yeah. <laughs> family game. Home wreckers. Home, best home wrecking game. <laughs> Play, no, that's Played Fortnite one. hands down, isn't it? That three percent marriage uh, divorce. <laughs> I, I did stop. play one game of Overcooked with Cassie, and I, I knew about five minutes, and I'm like, "This is a bad idea. I'm just gonna stop this right here. Just <laughs> this is not gonna end well." Because ten minutes from now, I don't want to be standing up screaming in your face that you didn't <laughs> throw the bread to me. Well, even when you're trying to be nice about it, you're like, "No, it's right there." Now we've been over this. You gotta do. It's just like, "Oh man, I'm coming across as a total stop dick. talking like, down to me." <laughs> do the dishes. Get better. You're dirty. <laughs> Sandwiches. We've been over this. Cook your own dinner tonight. Stop dropping wait, the beef. Wait, was that was that in game or <laughs> <laughs> that sums up the whole thing? <sighs> yeah. Uh, so maybe Overcooked Two will not yeah. win Best Family Game. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. All right. Oh, um, there. All right. We're done with that. So now we can move into Chocolates Call Out Challenge. After a stressful 20 weeks of destroying my opponents, I have come to the conclusion that nobody can match me. I've still got two more heads to chop, including my guest co-host, Cobbo. I know you're running. And Troubadour as well who has now informed me he is going away. Hmm. After those two matches, I'm going to retire. Because I cannot take it anymore. This will be the end. Goodbye, Chocolates Call Out Challenge. I love you. <laughs> All right. Chocolate, are you back? <laughs> What? Huh? What happened? Uh, like the, I kind of that crazy guy was back again yelling stuff. I don't know. That's really Do you know, weird. I've been to the doctor about these blackouts, and I said <laughs> if I just control my temper and my anger, I'll be you fine. Take those, you gotta take those pills every day, not just every, other, stress every day. Is it the green one or the red one? I uh, just do both. Okay. I think Cabo had a good point with the stress ball. Maybe try that as well. Just get a stress ball. Yeah, just squeeze the heck out of it. Ah, uh, right. That's it. I'm gonna go out and buy some stress balls. All right. You just get like a box full of stress balls. You're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> Break a controller. <laughs> call her out on a call right. out challenge. Don't tip me over the edge. Don't tip me over the edge. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. <laughs> no one likes me when I'm angry. <laughs> I believe it. You know what's not angry? The news. Terrible segue that was. <laughs> dun, 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 we didn't dun, help dun, you by just going silent dun, either. Dun, dun. Yeah, we were showing you how crap that was. <laughs> 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 All right. So first up in the news this week, how do you guys feel about a new Harry Potter game? That eh. is or isn't Legos. That isn't Legos. <laughs> Hell yeah! It <laughs> might be an open world RPG. Hell yeah. All right, let's, let me get into the story, I guess. Um, so over the weekend, we had some leaked gameplay of an apparent Harry Potter RPG. Um, the footage was leaked by user Vape This Bro. So I would say maybe take all of this with a grain of salt. But the actual <laughs> footage that was released, did you guys actually see this or get a chance before it was taken down? Yeah, I did right before they took down all the YouTube stuff. Yeah. Cabo chocolate? I didn't know. No? No, no, I haven't seen any oh, yet. That's too bad. Hopefully you can still find some of it because this game actually looks pretty good, <laughs> pretty polished as well. So if this is yeah. some type of weird, <laughs> elaborate <laughs> prank, uh, good on you for being able to create good-looking video games. <laughs> you should pro- yeah, you should probably go make a video game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hear there's some people hiring. <laughs> oh, you mean people looking for a job? Yeah, I think that's what he meant. <laughs> you mean the opposite of that, right? <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> um, so Vape This Bro from Reddit claims that he was shown some footage as part of a market research thing, but he didn't mention 
who was actually going to be creating the game or anything like that. The whole thing seems kind of sketchy. The only reason that I'm believing some of this story is because I saw the actual game footage. And um, inside of that, they showed a bunch of different Harry Potter locations. They showed some Hogwarts, Hogsmeade. Uh, there was a good chunk of it in the Forbidden Forest where you saw a bunch of magical creasts, cre- creatures, <laughs> creasts. And I was crease. trying to say beasts, magical creatures and beasts. So magical creasts. <laughs> that all checks out. This game's going to be rad. <laughs> <laughs> um, some of the other footage also showed uh, you in potions class. S- s- spell casting. I can't can't talk. Um, part of the spell casting that I saw, and it was like a more action-oriented segment in this. He used his wand to like throw a, what looked like a board or a piece of wood and it like went through like a goblin or something like impaled him which makes me think this game might be geared towards adults are we getting like a weird gritty harry potter game what what are you guys thoughts on that i'd be totally okay with that because well the the first thing that got me excited was that it sounded like this was a legit true RPG Harry Potter game and you're not playing like a named character yeah, and it's they showed just like, a custom character creator. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and that was going to answer my question cuz since yeah, I didn't like, see it I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, there's like eight different classes and like you level up stuff by like going to class and like you have different stats you level up like this sounds exactly what I would have wanted from a harry potter game honestly. yeah so there was like a brief description that came out when this video did about kind of about what the game is going to be um you're going to be a fifth year transfer student into hogwarts so you're come, coming coming into it late um there's going to be eight different character classes what whatever that's going to mean um and that you'd also be able to do go down like a path of evil or a path of good kind of like renegade hmm. um paragon so that's pretty cool. I'm just <laughs> in my head. I just have the Witcher three. Uh, that's what Harry I'm Potter <laughs> edition. Um, and then and one last as thing. As long as there's Triss. What? <laughs> oh, as long know. as there's Triss. Hope in there, Hermione's there. A, yes. That's what I was curious about. Like, is this like what time? I don't period? think we know much about. Yeah. Time period is like, are we going to see some like the professors there? Like Snape, Hagrid, see, stuff like that. I kind of hope it's not during the time period from the books because I feel like that would just give them that much more freedom to go off the wall with some of the stuff. That's true. I think cutting but ties from everything that you know about, or at least all the people you know of the universe, and either going mm-hmm. a few hundred years before or ahead. Totally, yeah. Um, but then the mm-hmm. one character I would say that, like Voldemort, I feel like might depending on where this game lands, he might need to be some part of the story just because he was such a big, scary figure in in that whole universe. Um, yeah, or something tied in with him in some way. I'd also or say, mm-hmm. like, the world around Harry Potter is probably more interesting than the actual story of, like, Harry. And, like, the books and just stuff. Just some nerd. Right. Like Some nerd with a scar. Exactly. <laughs> Like, the thought of going through, like, wizarding school and then dealing with all that kind of stuff. I don't know. This could be this could be really good. Um, and I'm kind of curious. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you're good. I was going to say, like, I wonder if it's kind of, like, I don't know. Have you guys ever played, like, Persona, the Persona games? Mm-hmm. Some of it. I kind of was wondering if it might be something like that, too. But yeah, yeah, like, you go to, like, the classes, like, potion stuff, and you start, like, and, like, you kind of, like, go through, like, a little bit of a cutscene of you going through potion class, but it raises up, like, your potion abilities, and, like, you may level up on that kind of thing uh, if this is like a hardcore rpg which i'm hoping it is then that kind of stuff would definitely be there yeah yeah like you have to actually go to a class just so you could build up your skill points and all that stuff yeah. Yeah. part of me is wondering too like how much of an rpg is it going to be like am i going to go to hogs i mean there's going to be like x ex- like yellow exclamation points above people's heads to get a side quest or something like i think so you know. dude. that's what <laughs> probably which I'm, I'm okay with all that too like <laughs> i think that's the best it's the best type of game that you can really make with that mm-hmm. universe, in my opinion. Like, I don't really want a yeah. linear story about one person and their journeys, like, being able to have all these side quests and, I don't know, just that big open world. Yeah, I mean, if, if there was a Harry Potter game I would play, it would 100% be this, because, you know, we've had all the movie tie-in games and all that stuff. They've <laughs> They've had their chance, so... 
lets it lets let you know let let them make whatever they can make with this as far as just a hardcore RPG. That I think that'd be really cool. Um, and then the last thing that's kind of up to speculation at this point is who's going to be developing the game. Uh, people are thinking it's going to be Avalanche Software, who they created Disney Infinity. Uh, they temporarily shut down in 2016, but then Warner Brothers actually picked them up. Um, and Avalanche had a job listing post in, I think it was 2016, might have been 2017. They're looking for a talented storyteller with a deep understanding of British culture. So that that kind of lines up. J.K. Rowling might fit. Yeah. I, Chocolate, did you uh, try to apply for this job? Uh, t- during one of my blackouts, I may have uh, I may have been there. I have a very good understanding of the British drinking culture. Oh, sorry, drinking not cu- what? Drink- <laughs> oh, God damn it! <laughs> so close. I think you applied to the wrong thing, chocolate. Yeah. Oops. How much butter uh, beer did beer you tester. drink? D- just a little bit too much. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to be impressed by this game. I'm not a massive Harry Potter fan. So I, I mean, I just yeah. hope they're creating a game that will be accessible and enjoyable from for people that are huge fans of that universe or aren't. I guess. Well, my thing too is that if they do do their own thing and it's not tied in with the with the books, I think that would be that much easier for people that aren't big Harry Potter fans to maybe give it a shot too. But <laughs> well, it brings life into the Harry Potter series again, doesn't it? Which. Will then spawn more books and, but then fanta- is it Magical Beast or Fantastic Beast or whatever it is? Isn't that meant to be a Harry Potter mm-hmm. spin-off? Yeah, Fantastic Beast. Is it? Oh yeah. yeah. I watched the first one. I actually enjoyed it. I didn't see it yet. You should see it. I haven't seen it yet. I should, but I haven't. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kabaski. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, that's really it on that. Um, Doc, what's up next? Uh, let's see. Up next, we have some uh, PlayStation news, actually. And uh, if I can get my mouse cursor should work. There we go. Um, game developers say that they are preparing for PSN name changes. And the reason I wanted to present this story is because this comes a week after I finally broke down and changed. <laughs> uh, or not, didn't change, but made a new account with to get a new name because I didn't think this was ever happening. But anyways, moving on. Uh, per Kotaku, three uh, people at different game studios speaking anonymously, anonymously because they were not authorized to talk to the press said that in recent months they've been bu- uh, fixing bugs, tweaking settings, and ensuring that their games are compatible with Sony's plans that has to do with user IDs. Um, a fourth person who worked for a game studio shared a photo obtained from the internal Sony documentation of a PSN profile containing the option edit username. This documentation was a guide for changing one's name on the PlayStation Network, that person said. So, yeah, so I'm, you know, a little bitter to say the <laughs> least about all this, but what do you guys think? <laughs> Took them long enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> you could say that. <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't understand what <laughs> what is so complicated <laughs> or, like, what changed in the last, like, month where they're finally, like, Oh, we can change names. What? Just had some <laughs> I, huge breakthrough I, in their software? Or like, what? And maybe they had to beta test it like crossplay. Who knows? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> oh, we tripped over the switch again. They've been beta testing. <laughs> Turns out this worked the whole time. Be- beta testing name changes for the past couple of years. They're finally ready to present <laughs> it to the public. Do you think they're going to put a monetary value on it? I don't always talk on about PlayStation money. They might do like Xbox, and the first one's free, but they'll 100% charge for after that, I, I would think. So. so, I think it'd be a good coup if they went, no, you could, you know, get two free name changes a year or something like that. Unlike Microsoft, those money Did, grabbers. Yeah, well, <laughs> it would be, it would be a nice um, spin, wouldn't it? Well, especially after not having been able to do <laughs> for it for the past ten years, <laughs> long time. I, to be fair, something I didn't note on this was that Sean Layden in a podcast, uh, I think it was early, super early this year, or maybe it was the end of last year, said that they would have name changes ready by the next PSX, which then spawned a whole wave of funny uh, memes on Twitter of, of course he said that, because they canceled yep. PSX this year. <laughs> so <laughs> We made a promise. That, we, we need, nope. Cancel it. Shut it down. It took down... Yeah, name changes took down PSX with it apparently. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so yeah, I 
I don't know. I mean, I, I thought that this would eventually come at some point. I didn't think it would be this soon because clearly I just broke down and finally made a new account. But That sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit. The timing is just Perfect. like... Perfect. Yeah, Rookie I'm mistake. I'm like, is somebody at Sony trolling me? or? <laughs> but anyways, I don't know. I'm glad it's happening, though. It needed to. All right. Uh, Chocolate, you got some Witcher news for us? Well, I do indeed. You're going to have to help me out with uh, his name. But the original author of the Witcher series... Andrea Sapkowski. Hey, close enough. Sapkowski. Yeah. Cool. Sapkowski. Good. Pat on the back for me. <laughs> um, has now demanded that CD Projekt Red pay him sixteen million dollars, as the rights to his work f- uh, was only for the first game. So, if you vaguely remember, I think he only got paid four ca- four thousand dollars for the rights to the first game. Yeah. Very um, cheap. <laughs> yeah. So. Th- the way him and his legal team are, are working this is because of obviously the series of the games, which are two, three, the expansion packs. They've turned around and said, "Well, actually, no. You owe us a percentage of the earnings of those games because we only gave you permission for the first series or the first game." Um, C Project Red has responded to the matter, and they said. In the company's opinion, the demands expressed in the notice in the notice are groundless with regards to their merit as well as the stipulated amount. The company has legitimately and legally acquired copyright to Mr. Andreas Saborowski's work in so far as required for its use in game games developed by CD Projekt Red. Um yeah, so, you know, he's been the butt of a joke for however many years, laughing at his uh, his pittance payoff, and has decided the jokes are enough, and it's time to slap CD Projekt with a $16 million percentage for the games. Um, unreal, really. It's This is just a sad man who... <laughs> Realized he lost out on a lot of money just with his last ditch effort to try to get yeah. something out like, of him. That's what it seems like. Yeah. I, it, I don't really feel sorry because, like, two things about this. One, he had it was completely within his rights legally early on to be like, you know what? Don't pay me $4,000. I just want a percentage of everything you get off this. Well, he had the choice, didn't he? Wasn't that yeah. the, well, the whole thing? Le- yeah, legally, you can make. Yeah, you can make it up whatever document you want to legally as yeah. long as they sign it. And so that's him just not thinking that this game would do anything, you know. Um, so that's on him at that point. And then two, I would argue that these games' popularity has increased his revenue for his books. For honestly. sure. Like, the so, amount of people that I've seen in, like, forums and chats and all that stuff where they're like, hey, I played through The Witcher 3. I really loved it. Um, how has anyone read the books? Like, what do you guys think about the books? Me. Like, those people are. Yeah. I don't, you're not talking about those books otherwise. If there's no game, no. I, I've read four of them so far, and I would have never, well, a knew of them or b bothered to give them a read if I hadn't played the Witcher series, the, the games. So I'm I'm one of those people that has given him money, and I wouldn't have otherwise. So. It'd be interesting to see after this kind of all washes out because this is at the moment they're only at the um, I can't even think kind of the setup stage of this whole trying to take them to court just to see the if the contract was was out there I, I never searched on the internet for it but just to see what the actual wording was was it for just one game or did he sell the the law of the Witcher to them to use in a game. Um, yeah, to see I mean, if he, he actually has a, air quotes a leg to stand on. Like, just the quote that CD Projekt Red gave that it said, the company has legitimately legally acquired copyright to his work insofar as required for its use in games developed by. That, to me, if that's worded that way, they're covered. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I, the fact that he took the money, the 4K, and then was okay with that at the time, I think I can't imagine he's got much to stand on, but then again, I'm not a lawyer, so. No. And let's be honest, will, will there be a golden handshake to shut him up, move him out of the way because they're busy working on something else? I hope not. <laughs> I, 
I, yeah, me too. I do too. Cause I, cause again, I think he's already kind of gotten that off his book revenue that he wouldn't have gotten mm. otherwise. So we shall have to wait and see how this pans out. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll have an update on this down the road, whether oh, or not this worked out for Mr. Andre, Andre, G- G- yeah. <laughs> Andre, Zez, G- yep. Well, especially since they're going on to, um, uh, Cyberpunk 2020, well, whatever, and you know, now, isn't so. he now working with Netflix for, mm-hmm. yes, for the yeah. TV show? So he's going to be fine in terms of that. Like, I don't, I don't, I, th- I think at some point he is getting a little greedy and like, look, do I, it, does it suck you're not getting paid for the fact that this was a success? Sure. But you agree to it. You know, that's yeah. your fault. I think he's just been the butt of all jokes. He's had enough and thought, well, let's, uh, let's see if I can get some money. I have to imagine Netflix is gonna he's gonna be fine with whatever that contract is. So especially if that does well and ends up doing multiple seasons, like Yeah. I mean Netflix believes in it enough that they got Henry Carvel to uh Cavill. Cavill We've to, been over uh, this so I, many I times. Mess that up. Um to uh to, you know, star in it because he's not just some run of the mill actor, so you know, <laughs> clearly they believe in it, so And he threw away Superman to do this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oops. Worth it. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Let me get rid of these tights and put on some different ones. <laughs> Jesus. There you go. All right. Um, next up, we have a final update on the whole Telltale situation and The Walking Dead final season. Um, so this is news from New York City Comic Con this Saturday. Um, Robert Kirkman in a panel about The Walking Dead said that uh, we've successfully negotiated with Telltale Games for our company Skybound to come in and see season four of Telltale's uh, The Walking Dead to completion. So that is huge news. Um, Chocolate, do you need to leave? <laughs> yeah, I need to sh- shoot the uh, it's the kids' bedtime. I'll um, hopefully be back, but don't hold your breath, people. All right, buddy. You're good, buddy. So- I need to right. love you and we'll leave you. We'll either see you or we won't see you. So you're such a tease, Chocolate. Uh, the biggest, I've been told. The biggest. <laughs> love you all. Bye, see buddy. you later. Bye. Love you, buddy. <laughs> see you, bud. I was just in the middle of reading the news doc, and then it just, I need to run at the bottom <laughs> of my news story, and I was like, oh, was all right. <laughs> Guess we better say goodbye. I was going to say, like... <laughs> I, 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 you've got more restraint than me because even looking at the uh, the the room we're in for the cast now, given the fact that what's Chocolate's name is and the hey button and everything, it's just comical. Everything about everything in this uh, the notes <laughs> section, so I love it. Um, <laughs> all right, well, that kind of disrupted this great news that <laughs> uh, the final season of The Walking Dead from Telltale is actually being finished. Um, Another thing that came out from this is Skybound said that they will be working with members of the original Telltale team to finish the story in a way that fans deserve. Um, That's probably the biggest part of the story is that they are going to try to bring back uh, some of the devs from Telltale that were recently laid off from this project. Uh, Granted, it's only a small amount of work because it sounded like they were pretty much done with episode three and there's only four episodes in this. Um, but just yeah. letting those people that started this and created this actually finish with the project, I think, is awesome. Yeah. It also makes a lot of sense that Robert Kirkman, the creator of The Walking Dead, would have his company, Skybound, actually finish this up. I feel like as soon as he got word of this, he had to have been like, well, there's no way we're going <laughs> to let this go down like this. Just let that be. Um, another yeah. quote that I didn't write it down, but he said something like, we're not going to lose Andrew Lincoln, who plays Rick in The Walking Dead, and Clementine in the same season or in the same year or something. Because I guess, yeah, he's leaving The Walking Dead. Um, Andrew Lincoln is so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really good news. I'm happy for them. I still hope that those devs find work after this. I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming they're just going to be. I don't know. Just contractors for this they're not really going to be a part of skybound or anything so they're still going to have to find work yeah. after this is all said and done i get the idea that's how a lot of this stuff in game development works a lot of times too it's just you're contracted out for a length of time or whatever right but I, this is good news too because even if the telltale original company had finished that one i would have 
been hard pressed not to give them any money just because of how it ended for their employees. Cause I'm just like, well, I don't want to really give more money cause it's not clearly going to those people they let off. So right. it's probably going to pay back you know, whatever debts they <laughs> yeah. have towards whatever companies they owe money. Yeah. To. It's terrible. So at least this way I can also feel good about, okay, well at least this isn't going to those guys. Right. At least so those that. people are getting paid for their work on these final two episodes. Yeah. No, it's really good news. Um, that's really all <laughs> there is to say about that, though. This should be our final update, though, like I said, from Telltale. That's the best thing that probably could happen with that. So, um, All right, Doc, more Sony news? Yeah, um, this one's a little less concrete, but at least it gives uh, some hope that PS5 will have backwards compatibility. Um, they have, or the people of the Internet have spotted a new patent filed by Sony, um, this was actually uh, first discovered and published on GearNuke.com. The patent is titled Remastering by Emulation, and it's registered by Sony Interactive America, uh, parent company of PlayStation brand. Um, it is quoted, this is basically just the actual text of the patent. Um, An artist remasters the textures for the presentation on higher resolution display than that was envisioned in the original software. That and stores them back in the data structure with their identifiers. The original software is then played at, on a higher resolution. Oh, that's hard to read. <laughs> okay, oh. sorry, Kavosky. <laughs> We're typing in the Google Doc. And it's shifting the story all over. <laughs> it's, it's on a page, bottom and top. Sorry, continue. All right, you're good. Sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, okay, the original software is then played on the higher resolution display with uh, assets such as texture. Calls being intercepted, identified, and data structure entered to retrieve the remastered asset, having a matching identifier. So this is all complicated stuff, but it sounds like that it is more or less a way of them emulating older games and to be able to play on new hardware. So are they just um, going to keep <laughs> doing whatever Microsoft's <laughs> doing just a few months later, just every single time? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you could technically argue, as far as a hardware perspective, the PS4 was just a newer version of the 360 in terms of party chat. You know, PS3 didn't have party chat. Uh, you know, just how it functions and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, kind of. That's what it sounds like. Uh, not to take away from any of the first-party studios Sony has, because they are knocking it out of the park with that, but it does seem like more or less Microsoft kind of leads the way with hardware and Sony leads the way with software a lot of times, so... But at least this is good news, though. It means that if you have a lot of digital stuff on your PS4, you might not be out of luck when the PS5 rolls around. So, well, all right, wonderful, sweet. Um, all <laughs> right, so our very last little bit of news we usually leave to the guest. So, Kaboski, do you want to take over <laughs> this giant new games for the week segment? No. All right, I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only one we have we can highlight is just this coming Friday is the new Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Yep, and we're all getting that, right? Yep. yep. Already pre-ordered. Can't. Dude, you, Doc, you like back and forth with that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I canceled a pre-order once uh, when I played the multiplayer. Then he played Blackout. Um, but then I played Blackout, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm probably getting this. So, Which I knew I should have held on to it and waited till I played that first, but... Um, if it, I will say, though, if it was still just the multiplayer, I probably wouldn't have kept it, but Blackout, yeah, I'm going to play that for sure. My thing, I was so on the fence after that initial beta. I was like, yeah, this is good, but I don't know. Or, like, this is fun. I don't know how much time I'll actually put into it, though. I'll sit and wait for Blackout. Yeah. And then Blackout came, and I was like, all right, well, <laughs> guess we're not canceling anything. <laughs> Risky. Risky had more patience than me, and I mean, it, and and two, not that their multiplayer wasn't good. It's just that with the games coming out this fall, it was one of those things. It's like how much time would I realistically had to play it? You know, not nothing against what the multiplayer we played was. You know, it was it was still fine, but Blackout's really really good. So, well, thanks for uh, taking care of that one, Cabo. Yeah, you're welcome. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> was, were there any other news you guys stories heavy we may have missed that you can think of? Me? Yeah, you. No. Uh, no, I can't think of any off the top of my head. What happened, really? I think you guys just nailed it there. All right. I was uh, trying to give you a, some time yeah. to talk since me and Doc just talked that whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I talked like the good beginning of it for like a good half hour, 45 minutes with just my, what God I've been playing. 
Hey, you got me pumped to Boy. try out Octopath. I actually do want to get that now. So you're not gonna play it, Doc. Yeah. Don't do it. I know. <laughs> That's not <laughs> like this is the worst. This is the worst time for me to get interested in something. Anyways, it's like oh, yeah. Red Dead, Battlefield, Black Blackout. Like, good lord, it's yeah. Yeah, it's uh, everything's heavy hitters are coming at once in like in the next like couple weeks. Yeah, but yeah. All right. Well, um, next up, we would normally have our name the phrase segment. Uh, we are dropping that segment though. It will no longer be a thing. Rest in peace. Name the phrase. Dun, dun, dun. Um, next week, we're going to drop an all-new contest, though, and we'll tell you guys about that um, next week when Chocolate's back. Because I'm sure he would like to tell all of you about it, maybe. Or he <laughs> wanted me to do it. Probably that one. But <laughs> either way, uh, that's going to do it for the show. We did it, guys. Another, another podcast it. in the books. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job, us. Um, all right. Well, Cabo, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. It's always nice talking to you guys. Always great catching up with you. Maybe next time, because I think this is the second time that you've been talking about Octopath. So by the next time you're on the show, <laughs> you need to have beat Octopath. Okay? I should. Next time Next time you guys have me, I'll have that game. All right. Beat. That's your, and I could just that's be your like homework. By beat, we mean rolled eight separate yeah. credits. So There you go. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let's. Hopefully, I'll let you know how they all goes. Yeah, <laughs> we want to hear how each story ended. So, plan on that being a nice long podcast. There you go. Just <laughs> spoiler cast. Um, all right, let's plug the show up. If you would like to chat with us, the hosts, the community, everyone, if you'd like to get the greatest and latest news from the podcast, join us on Discord. Discord is. Uh, that is what we are. That is a community. Um, everyone's there talking every day. Um, yeah, I, there's not much else to say about that. I was looking for some backup. Like, yeah, guys, it's, Discord's no, great. It's, it, <laughs> it is. It is the lifeblood of our community. I mean, that is where everybody is and interacting. So yeah, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, the Discord is basically how the community came together from previous totally. servers, kind of totally. thing. Great place to be. Great people so. there. Always talking about all, all sorts of things. And we have robots. So yeah. that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Yes. You decide. Yeah. Pick Fashion. your side in the coming war. It's kind of <laughs> incoming. If you'd like to support the show with your hard-earned money, you can head on over to patreon.com slash CAG podcast. That's how you can get into the Patreon drawings each month, and maybe you'll end up lucky like Viva Le Sweeney and win yourself something nice. If you'd like to stay up to date with the show, you can follow us on the social media. We are on Twitter and Instagram at CAG Podcast. We also have a YouTube channel. The links for that are in the show notes. Um, if you'd like some Cross Atlantic Gaming merchandise, you can use CAG10 at checkout for 10% off. Uh, the link for that is also in the show notes. Um, if you want to find me, I'm Risky the Kid everywhere. Cabo, where can we find you? Uh, find me on Xbox and PlayStation under Kaboski and Twitter at, at Brad Kaboski, all one word. All right, and Doc? Uh, Doc H1X1 everywhere, including PSA <laughs> now before the actual official name change. So thank you, And Sony. Chocolate Bear is Chocolate Bear 80, I think, everywhere. Maybe. I think so. Good work, chocolate. So. <laughs> thanks for your input, chocolate. <laughs> and with that, <laughs> you're welcome, mate. <laughs> There's Australian chocolate again. <laughs> oh wait, yeah. <laughs> I love Australian chocolate. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Cross Atlantic Gaming. We'll catch you guys next week for an all new episode. Goodbye. Bye bye. See ya. Got some lovely hobnobs here if you like.
Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark, do 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 do. Mommy shark. Daddy shark, do 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 do. Daddy shark, do 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 do. Daddy shark, do 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 do. Daddy shark. No, turn that off. I leave for five seconds, and then you. What the.